and AM 1160. And good morning. Thanks for being with this AccuWeather says today. Partly sunny. Chance of strong afternoon thunderstorms. A high temperature, 84 degrees. Bob Pollock is with us, Penn State Extension, joining us, uh, and uh, of course our Indiana County guru of yards and gardens and lawns and all of those different things and trees, a bunch of which have come down this week because of storms. Our conversation brought to you by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. And you can call Bob at 479-1160 or 349-WCCS. Ask him your questions. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you today? I'm wonderful. I have a question for you posed by a neighbor friend of mine whose vines uh, seem to have been afflicted uh, cucumbers, they went like it seemed overnight. Watermelons, same thing. Cantaloupes, zucchinis, something got in after them. Now he went out and he found some black little bugs uh, on the underside of his watermelon leaves. Uh, so I don't know if that's a clue or not, uh, but um, uh, is this something that, because our vines, they went overnight as well. So what's going on? Several options to pick from there. Uh huh. Uh, the those bugs he found probably were not the cause. Okay. Uh, but they may have been. They could have been feeding on there. With vine crops can be very sensitive. Mm -hmm. They can be tough, but yet they can go down and decline in a hurry. There are usually when the plant, the whole plant goes very quickly overnight, essentially. Uh huh. Uh, there's something wrong with the root system. Okay. Or the main transport of water and nutrients within the vine. So we got to start looking at at the root system. Mm -hmm. Now we've had extremely well. We've had warm weather, hot weather, yeah, and dry weather uh -huh. for a period here, and then all of a sudden we're getting these heavy storms, downpours. Although they've still been spotty, mm -hmm. you know, some places have gotten more than others. Uh, in low spots. Uh, one thing to look for is in a planting, you know, if you have a little swale, a little low spot where water tends to collect, um, do those plants, did they decline first um, uh -huh. or was it the whole entire planting? A lot of times you'll have a low spot or a spot with a little bit different soil type, especially heavier clay soils, where those plants will get stressed first and then they'll decline from there. Uh, there's a couple soil-borne diseases in association with those wet spots. Uh, so okay. if, if things stay wet for 24 hours or longer, um, then we can have one of the Phytophthora species, uh, which are waterborne uh, disease. And it's similar to the Phytophthora that attacks and causes late blight on potatoes and tomatoes. Okay. Um, but <clears throat> instead of being foliar, uh, there's also strains of it that will affect the root system of plants and just wipe out the whole root system, then the plant can't get water, and then boom, it just goes down overnight, essentially. Okay. Um, another thing that can happen is you can get uh, squash vine borer, which will attack at the base of the main stem of the plant, get in there and tunnel, um, and feed in there, and then cause you might get a vine going and you can get the whole plant just kind of start wilting and declining. Uh, the other disease that can attack vine crops is downy mildew. Okay. And it is widespread. That's, that's one of the, in addition to late blight, uh, they forecast monitor for that. Uh, so there have been a number, <laughs> downy mildew has been found all over the place multiple locations, multiple states. Um, so that's another likely one that will cause the plants to decline very quickly. So you can get some wilting, you can get um, some lesions on the leaves, and then a quick decline. Mm -hmm. All right, so all of those things could be suspects. Yes. Yeah. And, and those vine crops, like, you know, warm to hot weather, sunny days, when we get into conditions that are too wet, um, or some of these severe storms, you know, in a lot of wind, you can mm -hmm. actually cause damage to those vines sometimes just with heavy winds because they're, you know, if you cut a stem, Move it's around, hollow. Break it yeah, up. so you can blow those around, break them. You don't really realize it until it starts to wilt. Uh, now, in that case, a lot of times you don't lose the whole plant. The main part of the plant will still be okay, and you might have just 
parts of it go. Mm -hmm. All right. So all of those are possibilities. <clears throat> yes, they are. Um, they can, vine crops can be tricky. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and when they go, you get sad because, uh, you know, something that looks really, really good on Wednesday night on Thursday morning might be gone. And usually those, the melons <clears throat> were just, start, you know, the watermelon. Oh, yeah. The cantaloupes were just, just almost yeah. ripe. And then tomorrow morning, happens. I'm going to go pick those. Yeah. <laughs> crop was looking really good. Forget it. You know, I'm looking at the spotted lanternfly map. It has not changed uh, since last spring, uh, and we haven't heard a lot about it. Um, is the spotted lanternfly going away, or are we just not hearing about it? I don't think it's going away. Mm -hmm. We're just kind of out of the the main area, <laughs> the main event, uh -huh. um, so we're, uh, we're, we're not hearing a lot about it. Yeah. Okay. But it's still out there. Okay. Um, and and Indiana County, uh, two of our neighboring counties, Westmoreland and Cambria, have had spotted lantern fly. But uh, again, that map, you can just basically follow the turnpike. You follow the lantern fly. You sure can. Yeah. It's just <laughs> just that easy. Uh, you know. The roads and the railways. Hitching rides and, and off they go. All right. So that's going on. I, late blight. Just late blight. Uh -huh. Um. You know, up till now, we've pretty much been in good shape with that. Uh, the only confirmed locations was one in South Carolina and one up in Michigan. Okay. Um, those have been more than seven days ago when those were confirmed. Uh, this week, Maine uh, is on the target spot now. Mm -hmm. uh, so they had a confirmed case up in Maine. Yeah. Of course, there's a lot of potatoes growing up in Maine. And it was on potatoes. Uh, oh, yeah. The other... Two, I think, uh, that previously, I think one was tomatoes, one was potatoes. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, that's a long way away from us. But with these storm fronts coming I through to ask you. more frequently, mm -hmm. that can start to move. Because that's an airborne thing. The inoculant, yes. Yeah, so. Move it around on these fronts. So we just need to be paying attention to that. There's been a lot of early blight. Um, there's probably been some, you know, some bacterial spec. Uh, tomatoes can get bacterial spec, obviously caused by a bacteria, mm -hmm. um, and so we just need to keep up on that. The early blights caused by a fungal pathogen, um, extremely common over winters here. Uh, I've seen tomato plants already defoliated by it. Oh, yeah. uh, we've had just enough, you know, dew, mm -hmm. humidity conditions that have allowed it to sporulate and spread. Well, as we talk about um, things that are borne by the weather, we've certainly had some weather here in the last 24 hours. Um, actually, for this entire week, there has been the chance of, and in some places, a, a very good strong storm. Um, and so there are people cleaning up damage yeah. right now to their trees, especially, and and maybe some shrubbery, but uh, generally trees are, are being affected by this. And we're finding out a little bit about uh, what are our weakest trees <laughs> might be in our yards. Um, and, and so we get we ask the question every year, I think, about this time. When a limb is broken off and uh, it's not completely off back at the, the back of the trunk, what's the best method for cleaning that baby up and making sure the tree remains healthy, getting rid of that damage? Right. We want to... Chainsaw, I assume. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we want to prune it properly. Um Sometimes down trees can be very tricky to deal with mm -hmm. because there can be forces there that you don't see. You see a broken branch uh, that may be bended down and laying, but there, and especially when things get tangled up in other trees or electric lines, anything like that, uh, there can be tension on there. Mm -hmm. And there can be some, there are people that have been severely injured and killed just trying to deal yeah. with with down trees broken up trees because uh, you can have a branch that's bent back and oh you don't think about it uh, but it can be sprung back like a spring you take your head off. and you make one yeah. cut on there and that releases all that pressure and, mm -hmm. and off it goes um, so that then leads to um, be very careful if you're going to do it yourself call a pro uh, or yeah call somebody that's in the business to that can deal with that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that and then we find out too how many dead branches we might have in our tree because we often don't <laughs> look up. 
uh, or if the tree's very well heavily leaved with large leaves, mm -hmm. you know, our view can be obstructed and we don't see those dead branches in there till they, till they fall down. And then, of course, all the dead ash trees that are <laughs> around and along the roadways and in the woods, uh, these kind of storms with these heavy, gusty winds can take that stuff out yeah. uh, very easily. And all those hollow trees, <clears throat> trees that from the outside look fine. The ones that don't have elves making cookies inside yes. of them. <clears throat> Although they could be hiding in there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, those those kind of, it, it's just difficult to predict when those things can live for 50, 75 years or longer mm -hmm. and be hollow inside because the living part of the wood is right underneath the bark, keeps the tree going. Um, so, but structurally it's weak, uh, but it's still able to survive and, and go. But then we get one of these events and. Yeah. Down it goes. So part when, of it goes. when you have that limb that has broken off and there's just a jagged end still yeah. left on the part that's attached to right. the tree, uh, you well, don't want to leave that jagged end there. No, you want to make a nice clean cut back to live wood mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> or back to where that branch attached to a larger branch or the trunk of the tree um, and, and cut that off so that it's nice and clean. That way it will be able to start to grow callus growth over that cut surface and then hopefully eventually mm -hmm. seal that off and protect that inner wood um, from rot and decay. So that, that scab won't grow if you leave it ragged? No, it, it will try to grow growth over that, but because it's all jagged mm -hmm. and varying lengths, it can't grow over that sure. cut surface very easy. So yeah, it'll try to do that, um, but usually that's not very successful. <clears throat> Because it takes a lot, number of years. That callus growth, those cells will divide and grow that protective layer over that broken branch or cut mm -hmm. piece, but only maybe an eighth, to, sixteenth to an eighth of an inch a year. Yeah. So you can measure <laughs> the diameter of that cut and figure out about how many years it will take for that to wall off that and damage. If it does uh, stay ragged like that and splintery. Uh, that is the chance for the introduction of disease into the trunk of the tree Correct. eventually. Yes. And there you get your hollow trees, don't That's you? That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's where hollow <laughs> trees come from. That that bark is a very protective layer, um, but that inner wood is susceptible to decay and rot, uh, so that we're trying to protect that as much as we can. All right. So yeah. that Mr. Keebler, I think, did that deliberately. Yeah. <laughs> just because he wanted to make those fudge stripes, <laughs> he, and, he and built they're good. He built doors over <laughs> over the big... <laughs> All of those things. <laughs> All right. He's Bob Pollock, Penn State Extension. Um, fair season. It's here. It, it is here, it, isn't it's here it? here next week, isn't it? Goodness, here we are in the middle of August. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so go folks can get out and enjoy. Dayton and then Westmoreland and then Indiana and then Cambria. Yeah, the community fairs, too. And they keep going. They do. They do. All right, Robert. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. It is